really has been a disastrous night defensively. This is officially a mess right now. You better clean it up quickly. Goes Three and two, the pitch. And a high fly ball to left field, that's Tom deep. A swing and a ground ball up the middle. Goes to first, and he got him! He got him! Let's give a warm welcome. Hit well to left. That ball's hammered. Wow. Round third, he's heading home. All the way to the backstop. Ground ball to third, backhand is, it's a fair ball. Throw across the diamond, not in time. Are you kidding me? What happened? All right, here we go, Ed. concentrate, one more. Hey, let's go, hustle up. Let's... Yeah. He's on his way to third. Be the play of the year. Five. Is it deep enough? Here's the throw. It's 2010. The economy is in ruins. People were losing their jobs, their wives. People needed something to believe in. Yeah. Yeah. The line. We got 444,000 teams out there to talk about. I want to get to this team in Culver City Open right now. Open phone. And the main thing is with chemistry, we trust each other. Needed that, needed that. The year was 2010. Hard times had befallen the nation. At the box office, Inception, a movie about dreaming, led the summer movie parade. And in Culver City, California, a group of dreamers were about to embark on a dream season. This team provided that one glimmer of hope that things were going to be all right. Softball in Culver City was huge to a lot of people. You'd have fans anywhere from the number from three to six in the stands. Softball in the Culver City D-League, put simply, was a jungle. This is one of the scarier softball leagues I think there is in existence. They had, there's some real tough guys on pretty much every team. You don't know where they've been uh, or who, who they've murdered. That's scary. You had guys that would knock you over if you were in their way. They would throw balls at your head. They would throw balls at your shoulder. You right. had guys that would use curse words. You hear things like shit. Uh, a lot of times you hear fuck. But if there was one team who could possibly slay the beasts of the Culver City D-League, it was the ragtag Prince of Wales. This wasn't your ordinary softball team. They had their own camera crew. They had their own highlight sessions. They had their own weekly comic strip. You don't see that a lot with men's softball teams. <laughs> this team was so confident that they were going to win, they were one step behind the 1985 Bears doing the Super Bowl shuffle. If you want to have a perfect season, then you need to assemble the perfect team. He does it again, the man's a magician at third base. They all live in the same neighborhood. Neighborhood, neighborhood friends. They're at the same bar together. They're drinking every night together. They're sleeping with the same girls every night together. Half the battle of softball is team chemistry, and this team had it. Some say the 2010 Prince of Wales squad was the best in its six-year history. They had every component needed to go undefeated. Starting with their leadoff hitter, Josh Clark. Perhaps the fastest player in the league. That one's trouble. Watch out. Look out! Josh Clark, leadoff man. Wheels, we called him. A former high school state champion wide receiver. He had wheels like a sports car with the temper to match. He's for home. And he's still talking. Wow, I've never seen this before. At the opposite end of the spectrum was Pete Campbell. Well, predictable up there. Six foot five pitcher. Doesn't know much about baseball. Very awkward. I guess he did play lacrosse. Yeah, goal. Look out! Oh, he caught the ball! Away. Here comes Murphy! Batting in the three spot, Barry Murphy, who used to play seven days a week. Softball junkie. He epitomized the team's quest for excellence. The power hitter with the ego to match, Tommy Gimler. In all his years with the team, not once did he wear the team jersey. Never once wore a jersey, didn't feel like he needed to. The guy was put on earth for one reason. 44 home runs to lead the league. Ah! The hobbled veteran from Brooklyn, New York, Dexter Sucra. Dexter has just walked it off! Dexter! You had sleeveless Gary Dudak? Gary never wore sleeves. He is so happy. Warner Davis, the guy with the beard. 
Warner was the guy who had a beard. Warner had a beard. Here, here's a guy who has a beard. And I mean a big one. Wow. The youngest member of the team and the only lefty, Dave Bussey. Years old. So young, he'd never even heard of Steve Kuhnberg. So he's got something to prove tonight. When you're going for the perfect season, it's good to have those guys on the team that, that have a lot to prove. Here's a guy who's 23 years old out from Chicago. He wants to show all the older guys, you know, that he's got he's it. He's about to cry. On the but a team doesn't function without a skipper. This team had shortstop Seth Toder. Play by Seth. Seth Toder, player slash manager, uh, the crafty one of the bunch. Seth fields his position he very well. He was a wizard of sorts. And a fake throw. But look at this, they may have a play sack. He blessed him. And it would take such craftiness to harness the 12 different egos on the team. Some of his duties included texting some players about the time of the game. He planned to orchestrate the perfect season by keeping statistics on each player. Holding them accountable, motivating them. A lot of people had a problem with the stat keep. One side said, yeah, this is going to hold people who are accountable. And the other side said, you know what, people's uh, egos are going to get in the way. Here comes the throw to the plate. Oh, what a play by Murph. Wow. After winning their opening game, a dominant performance over a glum lot, members of the Prince of Wales did the unthinkable. We came up with this idea we were going to have a perfect season. And I said to the guys, you know what, we're not just going to go for the perfect season, we're going to guarantee it. It's contagious. Once one guy talks about it, then everyone else says, yeah, we can do this. Sports media these days have made it perfectly clear that you watch what you say. Open phone. It's got to be perfect. You have to run in your perfect rate. That's never a good thing. I'm going to be straight. Oh. You know, people probably said you wouldn't be able to do... You know, in this day and age with Twitter and high salaries and social media, it's something you don't do. In this day and age where you have American Idol, flip phones, Friendster, Instagram, unlimited texting, hybrid cars, Blu-ray discs, photo bombing and flash mobs, and OK Cupid, you just don't come out and say, hey, we're going to have the perfect season. And this team said fuck it. You got your phone number, you know how to find me, let's do this. The pressure is on. He's got to win. Games the regular season. Then, three play I mean, how do you make that work when you've got strong, forceful personalities like People that? You need to ease up off that guy. I don't think he's a number you know one. You know how many times that's been done? Here tonight, starting on is presented by Gun Pete! Oh, he's struck Now, let's meet the starting lineup. Leading off, left fielder. There was a sense in the air that night that this was not your ordinary game. This was not your ordinary softball game on a Tuesday night. This one had more pressure packed into it. Hey, let's go, hustle up, let's go. Hustle, hey, it's scary. It may look like an ordinary Tuesday night game, but I'm not going to say it is Tuesday night. Ready? Let's go. 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 Let's I remember we got double play right off the bat, which was huge. Hard hit. Oh, and a double play! Oh my goodness! And of course we said these fans are waiting for something to cheer about. Well, they've got a chance right now. Josh waiting on that. Come on, JC! Lead off hitter Josh Clark hit it hard. Line drive. Got it, bro! Oh. But like many of the team's hitters, couldn't get it out of the infield. Tough play. Oh, we start off with goose eggs. Now the pressure is really on our pitcher, Pete. And the 0-2 pitch. Up the middle, base hit. And the pressure just from there just starts building. And these guys don't know how to handle it. Can't do anything right here. Lines this sharply toward After a while, you can start to feel the rails come off the track. And this other team is just hit after hit after hit. And after a while, I was like, why did we make this stupid? guarantee. In their excitement to guarantee the perfect season, P.O. Dubs had forgotten about their Achilles heel, the catcher position. If you roll back tape years and years from this team, anytime there's a play at the plate, Are you kidding? most likely going to end in failure. If we were going to go perfect, we were going to have to figure that one out and fast. Coming off the throw, the plate is... Oh no! Shame on you. Here comes the throw! This is embarrassing. Oh, no. <laughs> got to be kidding me. That is a bad play all the way around. Two outs, runner aboard, the 0-1. Into the air to left center field and deep. All of a sudden, uh, 
things kind of change. That ball uh, is Hobble veteran Dexter Sucre's third inning home run provided a much needed spark, but it wasn't done yet. And after a while, our defense started to come alive. This one in the air. At this point in the game, guys are putting their mitts up and balls are going in there. He caught it! He caught it! And with the defense surging, the offense couldn't be far behind. Infield back, the pitch. Hammer! We were basically taking softball bats and using them to hit balls. Watch this baby go! It is gone! Almost down this Princeton Wells softball team has taken what was a big deficit and made it smaller. Holy oh, 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 crap, They're looking at his teammates. They can't believe it. 1 0 pitch. Gamble. So. Absolutely. He's going to drop in for a base hit. This will be the 13th pitch of the at bat. Tommy pulls it into left field, a base hit. Tommy Gimler led the pace with home runs. And it's going to scoot to the wall. Youngster Dave Bussey added one of his own. As did Murph. But the ballbusters weren't just called the ballbusters for nothing. 0 2. Line drive, line to left field. That's going to get down. And the run scored. I can't believe that. Ground ball to short, to second one, on to first, double play. Well, that's how you double the bump. Murphy. High deep drive to right field. That one carried way, way back. And it is gone! <laughs> Murph hits a, a home run to put us up. We've got to close this deal, or we got a, a lot of egg on our face. Made it a little closer than we had to in the final inning. Prince of Wales were now 2-0. Oh. Hello, thank you. I think with this move, they separated themselves from the pack. <laughs> the pressure that had been taken off our shoulders with that win, you could put it all right back on our shoulders. Game three was an early 6.30 game. Hardest games to show up for are the 6.30 games. A 6.30 early evening game is the worst game. It's the most stressful game. A lot of guys can't get up working time. So people that you've asked not to play anymore, you're calling them. I know both teams were scrounging for players. I know their team had a girl. Pitch. First pitch. Replacing Dave Bussey in right field. Farm League veteran Martin Howard. Oh. You don't really want to start a game that way because that style of play, that poor style of play, is contagious. But he is hearing it now from the 15th or so. I'll tell you what, there's not a lot, lot of love between these two ball clubs. Playing at a bouncer. Third base side. Base hit. On the second base. Ball still rolling around. Right. He's trying to get a second. He will stand it. That is impressive. One -oh. He swings the first pitch, pops it up. Oh my goodness. How about that? Piotr's was continued like a snowball. Sad. That is sad. Boy, this is getting a really a cover. And the inning is over. One one. Line drive. Nice. Whoa. It's a snowball effect, and it all started with Howie. 0 oh, 2 coming. That is a towering shot. And it is gone. I can't catch a break. We're desperate. We're down. We get a man on base finally, something good is going, then who comes up to the plate but Howie? He must be under orders, do not swing. You're just looking to put the ball in play. You're just looking for anything from Howie, hopefully a walk. Here's the 1-1. Oh my goodness. How about that? You always worry that something might be broken. And the 3-2 pitch. Howie deep to left. Martin Howard's single to left proved to be a much needed jump start. And Howie keeps the double train going. <laughs> We just got rolling after that. Really rolling. Well, then that will be gone. A home run. And it wasn't long after that that shit got cray. And oh, he throws it away. One run home, two runs home. We're rolling. We're really rolling. We get a little bit of a lead, and our pitcher Pete decides now's the time he's going to break out his trick pitch. That never works. Not to mention, he looks stupid doing it. Something interesting is going to happen. Winds it up, delivers. No. Oh my goodness. No. And all of a sudden, things are close again, and things turn to shit again. Enough already. Draws the walk. That ball scorched towards center. Line drive, base hit over the shortstop's head. Thinking about three. 
They got a chance all the way through. Oh, my goodness. The pressure is on. A very intriguing ending to the thing. Incredible. It's a bullet out to left field. waved around third. He's going to score. But the P.O. Dubs hitters decide to pick up their struggling pitcher. Cheering on his teammates. He's fun to watch when he's pitching. Including another farm club veteran, Jim Aero. Pete's best man at his wedding. He'll make the turn and head for two. The throw is two third. A stumble and look at this. Oh, they're trying to get back. Coming home. He will score. And everybody's going to be safe. Just completely falling apart at the You got a lot of inexperienced players trying to plug up the gaps, and that puts a lot of pressure on the team. And somebody was bound to snap. And the one two. And a drive to center field. Has a chance. Can he throw him out? He! Tommy Gimler drops the ball, which would have been the final out. The With two outs in the six, Tommy Gimler dropped the potential he third out. No shit happens. What? Whatever. Simply drop the ball. I, I make mistakes. All right. I'm I'm a human being. Josh Clark loses it in the outfield. Throws his glove down. Starts swearing it. Just threw his glove down. I, like I did it intentionally. It's like I would take a bullet for this kid. And he starts yelling at me. So I start jawing back. Like, you know what? No, I'm no longer taking a bullet for you. This is stupid. I'm just trying to play a game of softball. I heard a lot of curse words. And mind you, there's a girl on the field during this. And he's still talking about it. I've never seen this big guy ball game right there. The fuck I have never seen a guy continue the discussion with two down the pitch. I think the next play, the ball's hit to him. And I'm hollering at him as the ball's going out there. I almost wanted him to drop that just so he knows how I felt. Heck of a play to retire the side. Let's all say in the top seventh, with a chance to get an insurance run, Josh failed to put his money where his mouth was. And a one, two, three inning. In the bottom seventh, with Prince of Wales leading by three, Team Enterprise put two runners on. The tying runner comes to the plate with only one. Swing and a bouncer, third base side. Great grab, quick throw across the diamond, he wow. got him! What a grab to wrap up this ball game. If we had lost that game, who knows what would happen between those two? Probably nothing. Nice crowd gathered. Here we go, better now. Come on, JC. In their fifth game of the season, the Red Hot Prince of Wales embarked on an all-out hitting barrage against their rivals, the Albright Sports. There it goes. Right. Well hit. High drive. We were hitting the living piss out of the ball. We really were. Shot. We're hitting the living fuck out of the ball. And when that got old, we started hitting it to their worst infielders. It was kind of for fun. Play double on a ball that should have been caught. And when that got old, we started batting left-handed. It comes to the point to where you're really rubbing it in. And it gets to the point where it's bad sportsmanship. And if that wasn't enough, in the seventh inning, Prince of Wales sent their eighth string pitcher, Dexter Sucre, to the mound. I mean, what is this? Albright Sportsman was not pleased with this. First pitch, this guy hits it 500 yards. And a towering shot. He hit it off to the roof across the street. And a very slow trot. And words at the yeah. plate. I don't think they appreciated that. It's basically a statement saying, we're, uh, we're insulted. We've got a target on our back now. Wales continues to roll, and tonight they come up against an equally hot Glumline. And we all know Glumline got that team. And here's Murphy. 3-2 pitch. Shot to center. I don't oh, know what circus pitch. He said he's really mature. And there is the 1-1. With the holy gunning for them, Prince of Wales suffered a harsh blow as sleeveless Gary Dudak suffered a season-ending knee injury on a routine fly ball. Gary Dudak blows a knee. Okay, man down, but we can't afford to lose any more players. Coming to the plate, Glumlock, clean up hitter. And we all know how hard he is the fucking ball. Set up away. Drill. What a heck of a fly! Oh my goodness! And every now and then on the mound, he gets a little feisty. And you can kind of see like, ah, you know, maybe he is from Detroit. What a moment this is with his teammates. We, we won by a substantial amount of runs, but I felt like we barely escaped with the victory there. They had won the game 
but had lost a player. Ladies and gentlemen, the umpire is for today. Determined to keep their momentum, Prince of Wales bolstered their roster, replacing the sleeveless Gary Dudak with rookie Mike Larkin, an office worker. Josh gets a guy from work, his name's Mike. None of us know him. None of us know if he's gonna fit in, but he wears a backwards white baseball cap like Barry. And that was huge. Two outs, runner aboard, the 0-1. Dexter has just had two! Forget about oh, this one. That was an absolute He rocket. watched that one for a long, long time. From the get-go, the P.O.W.'s power hitters crushed their way to an early lead, only to be squandered by sloppy defense. Oh, look out. Oh. Missing the glove. Coming to the play, the throw oh, Speechless. And they continue to have problems at the count. Oh, my goodness. How many gave ourselves a reason to keep hitting. And that's a live drive base hit. Oh, the youngster has a chance to do some damage in his first start. Yeah! Playing his first game in nearly a year, match teacher Pia Cardi. The 0-1. Loop to short and drop. Can't field it cleanly, and he'll be charged with his second error. Now he'll score as the ball goes into the seats. That's amazing. With nothing to prove against the weakest team in the league, Prince of Wales put on an all-out beatdown against their weaker opponent. It's the same fucking thing every week. The plate is out of time. And the one-two. This one aligned to left center, and that is going to get down and run a go. Third base side. Fifth error of this game. Thinking extra bases. Thinking three. He's going to get to third base easily. Murphy launches deep. Gone. And imagine what Barry is thinking right now. That was huge. Three-two pitch. It's just gone, y'all. See you. It was basically Barry, Dexter, and Tommy having their own home run derby contest with each other. Come on, JC! A couple other guys tried to get in on it, but it was mainly about the big guns trying to outduel each other. That will take two tape measures. Another one gone! High fives and handshakes and a couple of water jugs. With the game in hand. Pitcher Pete Campbell began playing shortstop. This is one of the first times I've ever seen that. I mean, the fuck it, right? Round ball. That ball's going to shortstop. Throws got him. Oh, what a play. What a play. That is one of the best you will ever see by a pitcher. Game's over. Game is finally fucking oh. be over. But week eight brought more problems with the 6.30 game. I've never seen this, have you? Pete brought Tom Burton, uh, a senior editor from work to the game. Uh, clearly not a softball player, wearing jeans, uh, doesn't instill a lot of confidence in the other guys. From the minor leagues, making his day. In addition, the team called up farm club veteran Martin Howard. I mean, the lid doesn't fit. He has had a great kind of emergence since coming back from the minor leagues. He couldn't care less. He won two coming. Strikes out. In softball, you start with one strike on you, and I don't think Howie knew that. I do not know what to say about that. That's terrible. Wow. It's pretty fucking embarrassing. 0-2. Oh, wow. That is sad. I mean, there were doubts about our squad going into this game, and the first inning confirmed a lot of those doubts. He swings the first pitch, pops it up. Oh, my goodness. The 2-2. Two -two. Pops one up into shallow right. Look at Howie. Yeah. Nice play. Good concentration. He throws the thumb. He throws it away. Unbelievable. There's a 3-1. Rocket. With their depleted lineup, Pew Dubs elected to just hit every ball at the other team's 57-year-old pitcher. Oh, and a bobble there. Absolutely ridiculous. He, he should be suspended. This is BS. That's what it is. Pure, simple BS. In the third inning, with the game deadlocked. 186 consecutive plate appearances without a home run. Making 187. It was the unlikeliest candidates, Pete Campbell, who put the team on his shoulders. Just long enough to inspire the rest of the team. Line. Grant, what a play! Howie has done it again. How much he's put into this. Everyone had a line drive to deep left field. Maybe today from zero to hero. How about that? <laughs> that was outstanding. In the seventh inning, with the score tied, 
Martin Howard came to the plate with one out. Howie comes up to the plate, battling, fouls off a couple of pitches. Now all he needs to do is just find his way on base. If he could just find a way on, we get to the top of order and we can win this thing. The fans are on their feet. Here's the windup and the 0-2 pitch. Right center, gonna be trouble. Oh. And it drops. It drops. The runners will take off. Here we go. Campbell hits this one a ton. Ground on short. Ground to second for the first time. Hey, they got him. Look at this. Oh, Look at this. No. Oh, my goodness no. gracious. No. Oh, no. Howie's slide prevented a double play and left a man on base for leave it off hitter Josh Clark. I want to hear it really loud. I think the only way for that to happen is Josh goes deep. There is the 1-1. One, one. Holy smokes! Mike. And Larkin hits it deep to left field. And terrible, terrible defensive play. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Wow. Michael Border on second. He's on his way to third. Now he's coming home as the throw gets away. Larkin with the first five-hit game of his career. And fans want Larkin to take a curtain call. And it's not when they had to go to the scratch pile. A little magic dust late in these games. They almost can't find a way to lose. The team is just rolling. Everything's flowing well. It's kind of like you meet up. You get a bag of cocaine, you, you throw the whole bag of cocaine out on the table and everyone just blows it right up their nose. With week nine came an ever enlarging fan base, as well as updated team statistics, where youngster Dave Bussey found himself in dead last with a 340 batting average. Things looked even bleaker for him though, as PO Dubs now face the league's best defense, Soft Enterprise, ball, right who this time will be playing without the girl. Oh, what a play! Well, short to second one on the first double. You get the feeling this might be the game P.O. Duck blows it. That's the last thing you need to do. Speed. Throws the first and he got him! He got him somehow! And this really has been a disaster. With P.O. Duff's defense matched Enterprise stuck for stack. And a double play! So retired! Whoa! Sometimes you can't just power through a team. This team was too good for that. Their defense was phenomenal. If you want to be good enough to have the perfect season, you've got to be good enough to find the cracks. You've got to find every single crack in their hole. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Hard ground ball up the middle base hit. That is third and playing right field, number 99. Runner aboard, the 0-1. Tommy pulls it into left field, a base hit. Welcome home, Tommy. That's big time. But a rifle shot from the warning track. Tommy. Around second on his way to third. It's a 3-1. Swing and a long drive. He crushed it straight away, center field. He's coming around. That is a fair ball. Tagging coming home. The throw to the plate is... Both teams really battled that game. It was sort of the game where you just put stats aside and concentrate on the game, and remarkable things happen. And gentlemen, Warner bears his shot. Fowler swings and sends the ball into the right field corner. Incredible job. Big time. All right, so Tommy's the batter. Hard ground ball up the middle, another base. There's the 3-2, and that... It's going to be really hard to make the play, and by golly, he did it. The catcher, number three, David. Look at this kid has struggled. His body language has not been good. He's haven't kissed a girl yet. Uh oh, Gimbler trying to call a timeout. Lines it up, delivers. He's not going to get it. Here comes the swing and a long drive, deep to right, going, going, going. Goodbye. He has done it. He has changed the game. I don't think Buffy realizes how close this play is going to be. His teammates are mobbing him. That's how you bust out of a slug. You pull all your teammates out of the dugout. That's not showboating him. He's just exuberant. We had a lot of things working against us for our rematch with the Albright Sportsman. A, they're still mad at us for putting Dexter in in the seventh inning against them. B, it's a 6-30 game and we have nobody. We don't even have Dexter. Here Playing in his first game in two years, Johnny Random Stuff had agreed to play only under one condition, that he wouldn't have to play catcher. I call up Johnny Random Stuff, who used to play first base for us. He's here on one condition. Number five, Johnny. You know, what he lacked in fundamentals, he made up for with flair. One of those guys who, who didn't learn the game the correct way. So they start him out and right. Doesn't work out. They put him in second. Rounded to short. Johnny spikes it straight into the ground. So what's the manager do? The only smart thing to do is put him in catcher, the one position he refused to play. So he, d he goes, 
And I think he left about halfway through the game. Oh, this hurts. Going home. Three and two. Runners will take on. That's elevated. And he makes the He dropped the ball. The Albright sportsman wasted no time hitting the cover off the ball each and every at bat. Oh, my goodness. Keeping PO dubs on their toes full time. Got him. Hammered. Got it for the out. So Johnny leaving halfway through the game. The team continues to play. That one's deep in number 12. Mike. The 1-1. One, one. He crushed it straight away center field. Look at this. Great stop. Can he throw him out? Holy smokes, what a throw. Oh, my God. <laughs> Two. Hard hit. Made the catch. Wow. Here's a 3 1. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. Boom. Oh. That is totally absurd. You know, something just felt different about this game. Something was off. Opposite way. That's gonna be in for a base hit around third. And he throws the plate in. And we weren't used to this feeling, you know. Whatever they want to do, they're doing. Whatever we want to do, we can't do. And a double play ball. To second one, on the first double play. Five retired. Whoa. Place is stunned. In the bottom of the seventh and down by 12 runs, Prince of Wales sent Dexter Sucre to the plate, who'd just come from work. Round ball, they should do it. Full suit, coming straight from work, rushes over, oh, grabs a bat, hits into a double play. Out at first! And that's how the ball game comes to a close, and in dramatic fashion, the hard fought victory. So the ball game is over. It was like, wow, wow. What now? This team, this team had no goal, had no purpose anymore. It was no longer a team, it was nine individual players searching for something. The dream of the perfect season had ended. Murphy? You know, we, we had a lot of questions, you know? Open phones. And I really didn't think they thought they could be beat. They thought they had this wrapped up. And when they got punched in the face, I think it just deflated the whole team. You know, with the dream of perfection now gone, we started to redefine what perfection was. You know, maybe it's not what we thought it was. Maybe it's something totally different. They have to redefine this word perfection. Maybe it's not going undefeated. Maybe it's getting uh, back on your horse after you've fallen off to win the championship. Maybe that's what perfection really... That's what it's all about, right? To win the championship. So we ran with that. We have one game left until the championship. How good are we? Prince of Wales still had one more makeup game before the championship series started, and it was against the worst team in the history of softball. We needed a sparring partner. They needed a challenge, and this team would not be providing it. Got him! Oh, play! Sun peeking out a little bit here tonight. Hooray! Hooray! Save it up to be a nice evening. We destroyed the Brew Crew the first time we played them, and we thought maybe out of a sense of pride, they. They might rise to the occasion and give us a and game. And even though they've lost six in a row, trying. First pitch. Get into the mood, get into the spirit. Ground ball to short, in between up. Wow. Some of these players, I'm not sure that they even knew what hand to put the glove on. I think some of them might have been there by mistake. Routine ground ball. They, they couldn't feel, they couldn't hit. Absolutely awful. They were terrible. A little trickler. Oh, they have got to start making guys be accountable. You gotta be accountable. Got to be to watch the effort they put forth was actually kind of heartbreaking. In order to refocus, Prince of Wales decided the only way to go about it was to beat the living shit out of the Jackson Blue. This is not good at all because this is the kind of situation where somebody can, can get up, get hurt. So to watch the effort they put forth that night was really, really makes you lose faith in humanity in a lot of ways. Boy, this is getting ugly. Really ugly. Disastrous night defensively. Outstanding. Can't do anything right here. 3 2 pitch. And he strikes out. That's terrible. Look at him on three. What he is. Oh, what a play to get the force at third. Never.
never thought he'd get him. This is Bigly. Just when the Brew Crew thought they had had enough, P.O. Dubs turned it up in order to fully humiliate them. Runner first, two down, runner goes. 1-0 pitch. Swung on, hit hard. That's it hard. Uh-oh. Here we go. Jacks one to left center. And that is going to get down and split the outfielders. Oh, he did it again. <laughs> belted. And I mean belted. The ball's hit sharply. Go! And it's 25 to 4. How about that? Goodness gracious. And holy cow. No one was really fired up after that game. I mean, we knew we had beaten a pretty crappy team, and we didn't even know if we could hang with the Albright sportsmen at this point. Questions weren't answered. Can they beat this Albright sports team? After all they had accomplished in the regular season, Prince of Wales were now going in the championship series as underdogs. Confidence was low. One needed only point to their recent history in championship series. The format of the championship is you got to do two or three, right? In seasons past, we'd get to the championship series, we'd win the first game, and then we'd choke and lose. No. Just like that. I, I think people just thought that was going to probably keep happening. And you know, it's funny that we just shut this team down with a quote unquote mistake like burying the worst financial investment. We had lost to this team just two weeks prior, and we had lost badly. Part of what made the Albright sportsmen so competitive is their lack of um, compassion. In the playoffs, they beat a team of recovering alcoholics, and they not only beat them, they mercy ruled them. They're going to go ahead and pitch. First pitch, 7.06. There's one more minute later. Set up away. First pitch slinging a high fly ball to center field. And he makes no play. He dropped the ball. Early on, Prince of Wales struggled in the field, capped by catcher Dave Bussey's sheer ineptitude. Two guys at third base. They're going to get out of He just watched. There were two guys at third base fishing a barrel, and he didn't take the shot. That's a 21-year-old making a 21-year-old mistake. And we find another way. We're actually starting to get a little embarrassed by, by ourselves at this point in the game. Yeah, fuck it. We couldn't get anything going, and we started thinking, yeah, you know what? Maybe these guys are better than us. Not a lot of fun to hit. Throws a heavy ball, movement all over the place. 3-2 pitch. And this is going to be bleak and he made the catch! The Albright sportsman continued to lay it on at the plate. Got it in, drives it to right. That one's trouble. Now he's coming home. Here's the throw. Here's the play. Holy oh, smokes! Look out! The throw to the plate is out of time! Goodness gracious! Channing Berry Berry. The Albright sportsmen continued to squash all rally attempts, which only angered the hot-headed Josh Clark. Somebody needed to do something to fire our team up, but nobody thought it was going to take such a crazy play to do it. Hit in the air, left field. He slides, and he makes the catch. A complete all-out diving stab. Josh comes up throwing, and somehow the ball ends up loose. High throw, and the throw gets away. Look at this. They may have a play at third, and ricocheted right back. So he's going to pick it up, and he throws to third. He's got him in a run down. He's hung up between second and third. Albright sportsmen get themselves in a pickle between second and third, and double zero runs into Warner. He knocked him over. Yeah, they're telling him to go back and sit down. Dust ruffles up, people a uh, little pushing, a little shoving, but it's all going to break up. Uh-oh! Hothead Josh Clark sees this as an opportunity. Look at this. And here we go. Runs in there and stirs the pot. Starts the shit up right again, and fists are almost thrown at this point. Shoving his own teammate. Oh, my God! Let's and now both dugouts empty. And this guy from the Albright Sportsman comes charging off the bench, ripping at his jersey, threatening to rip Shirt it off. Tail out. And if he had ripped off his jersey, he would have been shirtless. There is no doubt in my mind, he would have been shirtless. Yes, there's a history of bad blood between these teams, I get it. But you never know how a brawl like that pulls a unit together. That was all about who's gonna harness this weird energy into momentum. It's kind of like momentum is just put up in the air, 
saying, hey, th I'm up for grabs. Who wants me? Great grab. Quick throw across the diamond. He wow. got him. Oh, and Prince of Wales gets out of the jam after some rough moments and some curse words. They shut the door. After that, we got an out. And after that, hey, we, got one. we just started hitting. Face him. In the fifth inning, Prince of Wales played like a different team. Left center, face him. Outstanding. Outstanding. Fly ball center field. Well hit. A long run. And that is going to get down and split the outfielders. Lumber around third heading goal. The point the plate is out of time. Two runs will score. It's an emotional game, and you understand. If I could impart a message to the youth out there, it's like, Fighting and threatening to fight it seems to work. Fighting does in fact work. Fighting works. Well, fighting is always the solution. We couldn't be beat after that. We were rolling. Miraculously, Prince of Wales had fought off the Albright sportsman's early charge. And we're now beating the living crap out of We have seen a little bit of everything tonight. He is one out away from history in this ball game. The fans are on their feet. He is a strike on the inside corner. How strike two. That? Big time. Runners will be off with a crack of the bat with two outs. Two outs, runner aboard. The pitch. High pop. Is it deep enough? This ball is caught! Game saver! So the ball game is over. We had 20 minutes to kill. We had been here before. They weren't celebrating too much. They knew that uh, if they lost this game to it, they'd most likely follow suit and lose game three. So this was this was almost a do-or-die game here. As manager, I, I started thinking, all right, well, do I need to change anything with the lineup? Do I need, need to do anything different? Or do I just stick with what works? So I just basically stuck with what it got us But what there. manager Seth had failed to realize was just how many pitches the Albright sportsman had seen from Pete Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is proud to dedicate game two of the series to the men and women. Big pitch here. Put him away right now. Can't make the play, and that's a fair ball. Got a hot shot. And, uh, Let's check out his delivery. Eager to mix things up, Pete Campbell opted for a curve. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Oh. oh, that's a bad feeling. Runner goes. Sends one towards the middle. Great stop. Backhanded. Game two was a disaster. It was a disaster from the get-go. Here comes the relay. Here comes the throw to the plate. They had Pete timed as a pitcher. They had figured Pete out and they were abusing him, psychologically and physically. You know, every ball was being hit on the screws and... That ball scorched. I think every player out there wanted a pitching change, even Pete himself. But as the manager, Seth did nothing. The 1-1. One, one. And hard to center field. Going back, still going back. On the run, Michael drops the ball and it goes towards center field. It'll be an error. Now the 3 1 pitch. Jacks one to left center. And he makes the He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. And the bases will be. With the game hanging in the balance, rookie Mike Larkin began playing like he left his good glove back in the office. What are you doing? It'll be his third error of the game. Just stuck to join up is all he's done. You know, I wanted to stick with Pete just so that, you know, he could learn how to get himself out of a jam in the future. That is a fair ball. That one's hit well. Deep to left field. Can he throw him out? Heading for home. Here comes a throw. Nothing on it. He scores. Draws the ball. He will score. I would imagine probably going to change pitches. Two down the pitch. Hit inside third and down the line. Today about going down to the instruction league. And that tells me that he doesn't think he should be in this game. He he's up. becoming a joke is what he's doing. He's becoming a joke. This is swinging a fly ball, left center field, deep trouble, tracking it. He makes the catch in left field to retire the side. Horseshit. He might be frustrated because this was an ugly inning. The look on Pete Campbell's face tells it all. The real tragedy here is that Pete will not be able to compete next week for game three as he will be at Christian camp. He's a counselor, folks. The pitch. Soft ground ball. Oh, and he throws him out. What a play. We got hit so hard. Our, our spirit is so Popped broken up. that, of course, 
we can't answer with our bats. His overall average this postseason, 200. Popped him up. That's scary. Oh, this is not good. Fans are throwing stuff on the field all over the ballpark. Ladies and gentlemen, pitching change is made. So I took over at pitcher, and I did what I could to get us back in the game. Set in for the bullpen. Wow. He hits it hard right at the shortstop. Oh. And boots it. Record rounds one of the shortstop. It's you booted. Got to be kidding me. Just could not get the hand. The seventh error of the game. Look out. Holy. O2. Pops up the first pitch. The wind's got a hold of it. Pops, recovers, throws. Not in time. And this will be a 2 0 pitch. And a line drive. Fowler leaps. Did he catch it? Tags the runner. It'll be a double play. What a play by Fowler. I mean, the catch alone was enough. But to finish it off with the double play. Swung on, hit hard. Left center. Base hit. Make the turn and head for two and make it ahead of the throw. Absolutely amazing. And the one, two. And our bats came alive. Josh coming home. He will score. Incredible job. I'm going to go with Josh. It's been an unbelievable story to get him to this point. The speed is just electrifying. As we take a look into the dugout and Barry, and he has got to be absolutely bubbling over with happiness. And it's on the way. Up the middle, basis. Speedy Fowler is unbelievable. And that's going to be in for a base Here comes Murphy. They just won't go away. Pete knew that the only thing he could do right now to get a victory was to start cheering. And he does it 100%. Yeah, come on! Let us up, Paul Hit in the air, left field side. Has a long way to go. 0-2. That ball is drilled. Wow. 0-2 coming. Deep to left field. This one toward deep right center field. This one's got a chance. Up the middle. Base hit. Holy shit. shit. You have to get rid of this one. field on the third. It's time to party. How about that? Unbelievable. Another that fucking hit. Hammer center field. Boots it. No. The all right sportsmen need just one out to win this game. But Prince of Wales aren't going to let him. Sound of very, very. Ground ball, right side. He's got speed. Down third. And coming to the plate. He's scored. Even though this game has been lopsided, they don't feel out of this ball game. The 3 2. It's swing on to the deep to left. And he makes no throw. He dropped the ball. Here's the throw. Relay throw won't be made. Throw to third. Safe. Clobbered. Back to deep left field. Here comes the throw. Coming home. Here comes the relay. He scores. Come on now. Nah. Ground ball. Sends one towards the middle. So with Peach cheering, the team mounts a ferocious comeback. And they're just about there. Oh, he got him! And this ball game is over! I want your thoughts on what happened last night. They look bad, though. They look really bad. Are they officially done already? Oh, I don't think there's any question. That I don't think they know who they are on offense. They have an identity crisis. This, this debate about chemistry and uh, just give me the best players. When your backs are to the wall, they always come out throwing. And not just punches, but aim it. Ladies and gentlemen, the umpire for today is getting the first base to the club and Jerry Meadow. Let's give a warm welcome. What a moment this is. Game three starts. Confidence very low. We just got beat up by these guys, and now we got our third string pitcher. It's Fowler's first. Damon, the teacher, comes in uh, to pitch game three. The guy doesn't even have a uniform. So confidence remains low. When their backs are up against the wall, we're seeing plays at such a high level. The most wins when facing elimination all time. All eyes on public school teacher Eamon Fowler. Will his pitches be too slow? You know, a lot of people coming out for the big game. You know, we had made a lot of big talk earlier in the season. Now people wanted to see it happen. Just moments away from the opening pitch. First pitch. In the first inning, Fowler got help from his teammates with Mike Larkin snagging the tricky fly. That might have just saved a home run. Well, he's made a bunch of them, but that might be the play. 
they kind of realized if they're going to win this game, they have to play perfect. Goes to second. He is clearly safe. And they start off singles. That's going to be a base hit. And Dave winds up. Taking pitches. Thinking he's going to take that for ball four down the first base. You just... That was awesome. Manufacturing runs. They're manufacturing the way you win a championship. Opposite way. That's going to be a deal one. And that is slug. Deep. Is it deep enough? He's got speed. Here comes the first. Sack fly. One hop is. Oh, my goodness. Scores. Popped him up. And he is able to make the catch. Another circus catch. Well into foul territory. Not only did the Albright sportsmen squash the Pewdiepie's route, but they responded with one of their own. A majestic shot! Touch them all! Albright sportsmen got dangerously good at hitting the gaps. They're picking apart P.O. Dubs. How about this? Look at this. Never seen this before. Bold strategic move. Center fielder Barry Murphy moved from the outfield to just beyond second. And here we go. Sends one towards the middle. And a bobble there. It'll be a tough one, and it is in time. He stole a hit. The 2-2. Such boldness, one recalls, was exactly how the Prince of Wales had begun their season. We said we were going for the perfect season. Well, maybe we didn't quite do that. But here we were in the decisive final game of the season, and the least that we could do was hit the shit out of the ball. There it goes. Absolutely crushed. Oh, my God. Dropped it. They came together. They were both under it. He might not survive the series physically, but he just made a tremendous. Hitting fifth, number 12, Mike. And the crowd oozes it eyes. Big pitch here. And Larkin hits it to left field. Number 34, David. Jacks one to center. Send to left center for a base hit and maybe more. Thinking about three. They're going to try to go for two. Here's a throw and he's in. Oh, wow. The big two out RBI hit for a guy who's called the blockbuster. It started out with saying, hey, we're going to have the perfect season. Maybe they, did, maybe they didn't get that, but right now they're playing perfect softball. Hammered into the gap. And now Prince of Wales is starting to look like that team they said they were going to be. Here comes the throw. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. He throws the third. He throws it away. Waits to get up. Now he finally does get up. And now he'll score as the ball goes into the seat. Number 64. Oh. Up the middle. And he leaps. Can you believe that? That ball's hit sharply. Bobbles. Look at this. What? Oh. And that kid is fired up. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Check out his delivery. We pour it on, you know. We played, we played some great A softball that inning, and the Albright sportsman looked shell shocked at the end of that inning. Eamon Power cannot afford to give them any momentum. And a double play ball. Out at second. Out at first. Again, POWs plugged the hole up the middle with Barry Murphy. Oh, what a play by Murph. The legend grows. Adding to his growing MVP. The Boatfish Grill, fresh catch of the day. They've had their issues with one another over the years. Infinity, disrespectful comments or other threatening actions directed at the officials. We came up in our half of the seventh determined to put some runs on the board because you never know with these guys the way they score. That ball scorched through for a base hit. You come to expect it from him. He does it so many times. Open a squash or rally and keep things close. The Albright Sportsman's off to intentionally walk the lefty Dave Bussey. Yeah, fuck it, right? The 1-1. One, one. I'm all set for you. It pays off. As gutsy of the decision as you can have with it all on the line. They put a couple runs on and then, uh, with the chance to end the game, this happens. Fly ball into center. Thinking about three. They got a chance all the way to throw, and he is. Just an unbelievable play to keep this game moving on. As gutsy of a play as And there's this feeling in the air, like, and you know, we were so close. You know, we had the championship. Can we just please get one more? Pitch. 
Ball's cracked over Josh Clark's head. Deep to left. Deep to left. Really deep. Oh, my goodness. What to his feet. Th throws. Sails the throw. Look at this. They may have a play of third. Throws to third. Two runs will score. Yeah, it hurt a little bit. Thought slowly creeps in everyone's mind. Oh, not again. Up the middle, base hit. And then the hits just keep coming. You know, we hadn't even mentioned Marty in this documentary, but he makes a throwing error. you got to be a bigger man than that. Draws the walk. And then Eamon just started fucking up. Boy. Brutal. That's hard to believe. It's starting to unravel, and it's not looking good. Well, how is this happening again? Is it because we're white? What have we done? The 3-2. I don't know if any other team has ever gone perfect before, uh, but we nearly did, and that's something to, that's something to say. Every year, there's always that one guy uh, that steps up. And a guy who wasn't even on the roster until the trade deadline. That really happened. It really did happen. Put that back from it. His first two points I thought were dead on. But that team they had and the remarkable chemistry that that team had with very few true legitimate stars on that team. The team finished 11 and 2 on the season. Not perfect, but they did win the championship. But they would never win another. Seth retires manager. Josh Clark took over for a couple of years. Seth brought the team back twice more for just a season, but that was it. And it was just like, screw this. Most of the players got married and had kids, except for Seth. He spent the next nine years working on this video. Well, he's thinking about all the people that have helped him throughout his career. I mean, you think about the days of playing in your backyard. And you have to consider this their greatest season ever. Congratulations to the 2010 series champions. The championship report is brought to you by Call of Duty. Black Ops 2. Bobby!